Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Middletown Presbyterian Church this morning. Uh, a few things to bring to your attention. Uh, this morning, when we uh, take up offering, there will be a second set of plates. Uh, that second set of plates is for our deacons' offering. Uh, it goes to, to help the benevolent work of our board of deacons. Uh, so when you see that second plate, that's what that is about. Um, also, you will see in your bulletin there is an insert that uh, gives you a little um, understanding of, of the Christmas joy offering. It's hard to believe that we're already talking about the Christmas joy offering, but Christmas is coming. Uh, and uh, every year we take up the Christmas joy offering and it goes to a number of uh, needy people uh, throughout the world, so uh, you can read about what that goes for. Uh, just reminders, uh, on Wednesdays uh, through the second, well, on Wednesdays, at least until uh, Thanksgiving, we're doing our Wednesday night family night. It starts at 6 o'clock with dinner, and then uh, we're introduced to a topic. We do a little singing, and then we split into smaller groups and, and talk about the topic for the night. Uh, all are welcome, so come on out and join us. Uh, if you haven't joined us before, you have, well, you have missed it, but you can still join us uh, <clears throat> That you won't you won't be lost in terms of our study because uh, each week is a is a separate topic. Uh, so come out and join us on Wednesday night. Uh, next Saturday there is a building and property work day. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you who came and participated in our Be the Church Sunday last Sunday. We had a great time. Uh, if you enjoyed that, I'm sure uh, Ray would love for you to to come out and and join him uh, as we do some work around the church next Saturday. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, those of you who uh, are interested in, in participating in the Adopt a Child uh, project for Christmas, uh, you'll see information in your bulletin, uh, but uh, that the deadline for uh, submitting a request for that is coming up next weekend, so uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, also, uh, not, not tomorrow, but the following Monday uh, is our Prime Time Plus, and uh, on that Monday we will be uh, doing a uh, tribute uh, to our veterans. Uh, so we invite any of you who are veterans or any of you who would like to come and support and encourage our veterans uh, to come out next uh, Monday at noon uh, in the chapel for a nice lunch uh, and a little program. Uh, so I think those are all of our announcements for this morning. Uh, so we will now begin worship. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. Lord, how diverse are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. The 
proof of God's amazing love is this, that while we were yet in rebellion against God, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so let us approach God's throne of mercy and grace to confess our sins using the prayer of confession found in your bulletin. Let us pray together. O God of wisdom, we have given more weight to our successes and our happiness than to your will. We have eaten without a thought for the hungry. We have spoken without an effort to understand others. We have kept silence instead of telling the truth. We have judged others, forgetful that you alone are the judge. We have acted rather in accordance with our opinions than according to your commands. Within your church, we have been slow to practice love of our neighbors. And in the world, we have not been your faithful servants. Forgive us and help us to live as wise disciples of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Friends, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus our Lord. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
This morning's Old Testament reading comes from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 through 14. And they can be found on page 238 of your pew Bibles. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and, said, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant and my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great, so numerous, a great people so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. May God bless this, under, this reading of his word.
You may be seated. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this new opportunity to gather in your house, to gather in your name, to gather around your word. And Lord, we just pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us today, that you would open our hearts and our minds, that we might hear directly from you, that our hearts might be changed, that our behavior might be changed, and that through us, you might change the world. For Jesus' sake, amen. Well, this morning we are kind of starting a new series, although it's really the second part of a series we did in September. Uh, In September, uh, we did a series on kingdom accounting, uh, the first part. Uh, Then in in October, we uh, were looking uh, at the Reformation as we were building up to Reformation Sunday, uh, and today we're going to start part two of kingdom accounting. And as we talked a little bit about in September, uh, Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And when He talked about the kingdom, He didn't talk about it as something that was going to happen sometime in the future. He talked about it as something that was already beginning to happen. With with Jesus coming, the kingdom was initiated. It, It began. And the kingdom is wherever God's will is done on earth. When when we say the Lord's Prayer every week, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so part of our calling as citizens of the kingdom is to be uh, used by God to, to bring His will, to do His will in this world. That's, that's part of uh, what we are called to do. Now, in our current Scripture this morning... Uh, Prior to it, Jesus has been doing a lot of talking about the things that are about to happen in Jesus' life and in the lives of His disciples. He's trying to give them a heads up about the fact that they're going to Jerusalem, uh, that He is going to be crucified, He's going to die, but that He's going to rise again. And then as we know, because we've read the story, He ascends into heaven, but He promises that He will come back again. And so, in our Scripture for today, He is talking to His disciples, who, quite frankly, don't understand what He's talking about, but He's talking to them about that period in between, that period between His resurrection and ascension and His coming again. And so, when at the beginning of our passage today, when when He says, then, or a better translation might be, at that time, that time is is that period between His ascension and His coming again. And so this morning we are in Matthew chapter 25, and uh, he's, he's going to be using an illustration here of marriage. Now, it's, it's not uh, a marriage tradition that, that we are accustomed to. So I want to give you a little background. The, the tradition was that when a marriage was going to happen, the bride's side, the bridesmaids and the bride's family would all gather at the bride's house to await the coming of the groom. When everything was prepared, the groom would then come to the bride's house to collect her and escort her and her whole side of the family to his house or to his parents' house where the wedding ceremony where the, and the banquet would take place. And so they prepared at the bride's house for the coming of the groom. And so sometimes the, the bridesmaids, one of their jobs would to be await his coming. So they would stand outside with their lamps lit, ready for the, the, the groom to show up, uh, and then they would tell everyone in the house that he had arrived, uh, and the celebrations would begin. So that is what Jesus is talking about, and uh, this is something that would have been familiar to the people that he was talking to but not quite so familiar to us. 
And so in chapter 25, starting at verse 1, Jesus says, then or at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. So understand, He's not saying sometime, you know, when, when, the, when you die or when I come back. He's saying in the not too distant future, at that time between my ascension and uh, my coming again, in that period of time, when you're wondering, where is he? Well, why hasn't he come back yet? This is what the kingdom should look like, or will look like. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for us and for you. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. As with many of his parables, not the happiest ending, but that's because it is a warning. That's because it's trying to get our attention. Here are these, these ten bridesmaids. There is to be a wedding, and they are prepared. They, they come with their lamps. Now, one thing that is, is not uh, perhaps told us in great detail, their lamps are lit this whole time because it, it's nighttime. And so their lamps are lit expecting at any moment the bridegroom to arrive and for them to light his way into the bride's house. But the bridegroom is delayed. Now, if you've ever been to a wedding, and I've done quite a few now, <laughs> weddings are often delayed. But I will say that in our current tradition, it is rarely the groom that is the cause. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but in this case, it is the groom who is delayed. All sorts of preparations are going on and apparently something isn't ready quite yet and so he doesn't arrive exactly when they expect him. And they're waiting. And they wait. And they wait. And then they begin to doze. It's reasonable. It's getting late at night. In fact, when he arrives, it's about midnight. So it's not unreasonable that they would be tired, that they would fall asleep. That's not the problem. The problem is when he arrives, five of the bridesmaids are prepared. Because at this point, because he's been delayed, their lamps are becoming empty. The oil has burned off. And so they go and they grab their flasks and they refill their lamps. So the light continues to shine. But five of them weren't really prepared. They figured, well, if he's on time, we're all right. We've got plenty of oil to, to last uh, until he is supposed to get there. 
And if he's a little late, well, I don't know. You know, Martha, she, she's always prepared. She'll have extra oil. But they aren't ready. Now, wh what does this have to do with us? Well, the fact is, when Jesus is telling his disciples all about his crucifixion and his resurrection, they have no clue what he's talking about. Because when he's arrested, and when they witness the crucifixion, it shatters their world. They weren't expecting this. Even though he had told them over and over what was about to happen, they didn't get it. Until afterwards. And afterwards, when he was resurrected, and when he began to remind them of the things that he, they, he had told them, they began to go... Oh, that's what you were talking about. But then he promises to come again. Now, they're thinking that probably many of them would still be alive when he returned. They, they didn't think that it would be a lengthy period. Jesus apparently knew it was going to be some time. And now, we're nearly 2,000 years. And it hasn't happened yet. Some of us are waiting and watching. Every generation, there's somebody who rises up and says, it's coming. You might remember a couple of years ago, Harold Camping made a, a, a prediction that the end of the world was coming, I think it was in May or June, and when that didn't happen, oh, well, I guess I was a little off, and it was December, and our kids had a, a, an end of the world lock-in. I figured, well, if it does happen, what better place to be than the church? But it didn't happen. And what happens whenever those predictions are made? Whenever someone predicts the end of the world, that, that group of people who believe them, they begin scurrying around, doing really one of two things, either living it up because the end is coming, spending their credit cards up to the limit, spending all their money, doing all the things that they hadn't dared to do because the end is near. Or, on the other hand, getting their affairs in order, doing all the things they know they should have done, but didn't, trying to make things right with God. You see, most of us are probably more like those foolish bridesmaids. We figure, well, we're not too bad. We'll, we'll just wait. We'll wait and see how things work out. We'll do what we want and when we hear that the end is gone, well, well, we'll try to put things together and, and fix it all then. It's the old, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, thinking. But what Jesus is saying here is, the wise person is the one who knows that if you're living as citizens of the kingdom, if you're, if you're following my commands, if you're doing what I have called you to do, every day. Sure, you'll, you'll make mistakes along the way, but if you're sincerely trying to follow me, to do what is right, to, to bring light into the world, then it doesn't matter when the end comes. It doesn't matter when I return, because you'll be ready. There won't be any hurrying or scurrying. You, You'll welcome my coming because you'll already be ready. It's interesting that, that he used bridesmaids with their lamps because Jesus, first of all, said, I am the light of the world. But then he said to his disciples, to those who followed him, to those who were seeking to become more and more like him, he said, you are the light of the world. 
You are the light of the world. You, the body of Christ, the physical presence of God in this world, you are to be the light in the darkness. You are to be the ones who bring truth, who bring hope, who bring light into the darkness. Not just in those last few days before the end, but every day. We are to be bearers of the light. And we don't know when He will come again. We don't know when the end will come. I don't even know why we keep trying to figure it out. Jesus Himself said, I don't even know. Only the Father knows. And it doesn't matter. If we live every day as servants of the King, as citizens of the kingdom of God, if we live every day trying to bring light and hope into this world, then whenever the end comes, our lamps are lit. Our light is shining. We will be ready to go. May it be so. To God's honor and God's glory. And in Jesus' name, amen. Just to bring something that's over.
You may be seated. We now come to a time of prayer. Uh, so, are there things that we have for prayer this morning? Yes. Andy Nelson. Has he had more or? Oh. Okay, Andy Nelson, who's been having many strokes. All right, other things? Bill. All right, for Becky, who lost her son a few years ago and is still struggling and in a bad place. Brenda. Uh, All right. Paul with lung cancer. Bob. Jim with lymphoma. All right. Yeah, Mary. Uh, my husband Bill uh, is having some heart concerns and he's having a catheterization on Tuesday, so pray that the doctors can correct well. All right. For Bill, who's having a heart cath, uh, and we will pray for him. Other things? Any? All right. Not seeing any more, so let's go to prayer. Lord, again, we do thank you for this day, for this hour of worship, for this opportunity to come together, to sing your praises, to read your word, to love on one another. And Lord, as we gather this morning, we lift up some of those on our hearts and minds who are in need of your tender care. Lord, we want to lift up Bonnie, Bonnie Carlson, uh, who has been diagnosed with cancer and has a blood clot in her leg, which is uh, holding up uh, her treatment. Uh, for Daniel, who uh, has a brain aneurysm. For Andy Nelson, who's been having many strokes. For Paul with lung cancer and Jim with lymphoma. For Bill, uh, who's having uh, some heart issues and having a catheterization. For Becky, who is grieving the loss of her son. Lord, we lift each one of these to you. Praying that you will be in each one of these lives. That you will be in each situation. That you will be bringing the strength and the hope and the comfort and the peace and the guidance and the direction that each one of these individuals and their families are in desperate need of. Lord, we pray that they might experience your presence with them. And Lord, as, as your people, as those who seek to follow you, who seek to become more and more like you, we pray that if you can use us that you would fill us with your spirit, that you would send us, that you would help us to be your comforting presence, your word of hope and of truth, your hand of blessing and companionship and healing. Lord, fill us with your spirit and send us to do your work. Lord, we also want to give you thanks for the many blessings that you pour out upon us for birthdays and anniversaries, for friends and family, for warm homes and safe havens. Lord, we give you thanks. And we lift all of these things to you in the mighty name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If the ushers and deacons will now come forward, we will continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings. Uh, remember that there is a second set of plates for the deacon's offering uh, that will be coming around. If you are a guest or visitor with us this morning, please don't feel obligated to put anything in the plate. Your presence here among us is gift enough. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your amazing love for us. We ask that you would accept these offerings which we offer back to you as tokens of our love and our appreciation. We ask that you would bless them and multiply them and use them to further your kingdom in this world. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please join hands for the benediction. Friends, you are loved by God, and He sends you to be a light in this world. So go out in His power to light your world with His love, and in Jesus' name, amen.